flash of a neon light that slid the night and touched the sound of silence. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, should the all ages, Hollywood Shona here, about to give you another Nintendo Switch video. In this video, I wanted to talk about 10 Nintendo Switch ports that look absolutely amazing on the Nintendo Switch. Now, I know the camera placement probably is not the best location for some of these tests. It might block out some of the UI, but one thing I'd also like to point out is that if Warframe can put 12.5 gigabytes into a game, why do we have over 20 gigabytes on 2K games? Is it me or is the compression lost? And maybe that's why WWE 2K18, for, for example, is not a port that looks amazing and actually has horrible frame rate issues. But I want to show you guys 10 games that actually have amazing ports on the Nintendo Switch. All right, so the first game that I actually want to show off in my list of great Nintendo Switch ports is Warframe. I played a little bit of this yesterday, and I must say that the experience is great. There is some actual in-game chat that you can use with the headset to actually communicate with people. The most preferred way that I've found to actually be able to communicate with people on the Nintendo Switch is by using Discord, either through your phone or a PC, if you're playing the Nintendo Switch on a TV. You're just gonna get a much better experience. If you're playing in dock mode, headphones with an inline mic definitely work. So, let's the show off some of the gameplay. Our doorstep. You must defend our equipment and you guys until can see how everything looks just amazing on the Nintendo Switch. Now as far as Warframe goes, I think the UI in the bottom left is probably the best for streamers. You could probably put it in the top right, but that covers up the vitals. But you can see everything runs in 60 FPS just fine, which is absolutely insane. So we're going to show off the first wave. The thing that impressed me the most about the Warframe port is that there's like no slowdowns whatsoever. Combat is definitely fluid. It's everything that you'd expect out of the PS4 Xbox One version. Maybe not quite as much graphics. If somebody wants to make a comparison video, Warframe on the Switch versus Contra, I'm sure that's pretty that first but It's definitely a good gameplay experience overall. I think it's a very impressive thing. And the best part about the Warframe on the Nintendo Switch is it's absolutely free. And one thing I also want to point out is that within this video, we are not talking about first-party games. We're not talking about Mario Kart, Pokemon Tournament GX. We're not talking about Breath of the Wild, Super Mario Odyssey, Mario Party, or the upcoming uh, new Super Mario Brothers on the Nintendo Switch, which are probably all automatic buys. It's not also talking about Hyrule Warriors. So no first party games will actually be on this. This video will be covering third party games. And there are some great ones. But yeah, Warframe on the Switch, absolutely amazing. No complaints whatsoever. And that is the first wave clear. Let's go to the next game. One thing that I do want to point out while I'm loading between games is that while the performance on games like Diablo 3 and Warframe are amazing at 60 FPS, just be warned that you're probably going to experience increased loading times, but the important thing is the gameplay is there. It runs great, and you're not going to have any problems. All right, and for our next demonstration, we're going to be running Diablo 3. We're going to do a rift on Torment 13 with my Whirlwind Bar. Now, I've run Greater Rift 63, no problem. I cleared that in like 8 minutes, so we shouldn't have any problems whatsoever with this, as long as we know to use Furious Charge. Now, Diablo 3 is another one of those games that I wish had internal voice chat. Warframe was able to pull it off. Hopefully, Diablo 3 on the Switch can incorporate that in the exact same way by just putting a headset in, and you get voice chat. I haven't been able to figure out how to do voice chat on the Nintendo Switch and have a headset in, because I have a SteelSeries Archer 7, which is what I use on my PC. But unfortunately, that does not quite work so well in this environment. So already what you can see on the Diablo 3 port is that you're going to see increased loading time. But that's not going to take away from the fact that Diablo runs great. 
on the Nintendo Switch. Everything that you know about the PS4 and Xbox One version is all good. Everything runs buttery smooth. I think Blizzard did a great job with the Diablo 3 experience. And you can just see how everything runs in great. Let's see if we can get a bunch of mobs in one area. Let's see if we can get a bunch of puzzles on. You can see that Diablo handles everything great. I think the problem that Nintendo had in its first year, kind of like the PS4 did with some games early on, like you saw Killzone, you saw Infamous, and that was when the console was in its infancy. We even had Knack, which was kind of a launch game. And a lot of the games just not polished. We're already about a year and a half into the Nintendo Switch of Life Soul, and we're seeing some quality ports here. And this is a great example of one of those ports I find to be absolutely amazing because Diablo 3 runs great on the Nintendo Switch. There's no slowdown, there's no issues whatsoever about frame rates. Just play the game like you would on the Big Brother PS4 or Xbox One. Obviously not going to be the same experience on PC. Nothing compares to the PC version of Diablo 3, but it's a great port. And you can also play multiplayer by going in and no friends online. But if you have friends, you'll be able to pop in right there. And in my opinion, a great port by Blizzard. All right, so in my third game that I'm going to be showing off here is NBA 2K19 on the Nintendo Switch. Now, one thing I would like to point out is that NBA 2K19 on the Nintendo Switch, just like 2K18, is capped at 30 FPS. But that should not take away from the experience on the Nintendo Switch. But keep in mind that you're not going to get much storage difference if you're going physical versus digital, and that's hugely unfortunate. Like, And I think that goes down to 2K being cheap and not putting more of the game on the cartridge because we've seen Diablo 3 run perfectly off the cartridge even though there's only been a minor update to the icon of the game but you can see everything about NBA 2K19 that went out of bounds trying to talk and not pay attention but you can see everything about NBA 2K19 plays just fine you don't need 60 FPS for a great basketball experience on the Nintendo Switch, and if you want 60 FPS, go play NBA Playgrounds 2K. I think that's a great experience here. So we're going to try to shoot a 3 here. Pretty bad. But we're able to get a 2. Which actually was 3, but who's counting? And yeah, we're playing blacktop mode currently. It's one of my favorite game modes. I like playing... Uh, Normally three versus three. We had like three Shacks versus three Jordans in a previous live stream. But yeah, NBA 2K19 runs great. It's not a port that you're going to be disappointed with. And if you're watching this video on Black Friday, it's 50% off. So you want to pick it up, now's the time to do it. And I believe the Legend Edition is also 50% off, so you're only going to pay 50 bucks for it. Limited time thing. Andre Drummond coming in. And we're going to badly miss that shot. But yeah, NBA 2K19, I don't know what the hell that was. It's a great port of the game. I think in any version of NBA, it's a great experience and one I highly recommend if you like basketball. All right, and number four on the list of games that I highly recommend on the Nintendo Switch is Dark Souls. It recently came out about a month ago, a couple weeks before Diablo 3 did, I think just a week beforehand, but... It's a great game, and if you haven't played the series before, it's one I highly re recommend. If you played the three Dark Souls on the PS4, PC, or anything else like that, you're still going to enjoy it. Now, one thing to also note about the Nintendo Switch version, and I'm just incinerating myself for no reason. No, I'm just kidding. Man, I just killed myself. One thing to note with Dark Souls on the Nintendo Switch is that like NBA 2K19 it's capped at 30 FPS meaning that it's not going to be as buttery smooth as Warframe or Diablo 3 but the fact that the game can run is a big deal. If you want a good example of a Namco Bandai game that runs in 60 FPS check out number 8 on the list coming down. Yeah, I 
never said I was a pro at Dark Souls, but yeah, you can see everything is not quite as smooth as a 60 FPS game, but it runs good. A Dark Souls at 30 or 60 FPS is a great experience, and one I'd highly recommend, especially if you enjoy dying. one-shot that skeleton. The one thing I've always loved about the Dark Souls series of games is the huge level of customization that they have. The fact that you can customize your stats as you level up, and it also influences the abilities that you have, as we have one affinity right now. But it influences everything you have. It's been a while since I've actually played Dark Souls on the Switch, so... But yeah, you can see that it's capped at 30 FPS, and probably for a reason. The fact that they couldn't scale up a PS3 game down. Kind of baffling to me, but it's whatever. I mean, the game still runs great, and you're not going to be disappointed by it. You're getting fire slugged at me. So, as you can see, a solid Nintendo Switch port. I need an SS Flex to heal up. Somehow avoid getting hit there. But yeah, if you like Dark Souls, you're going to love this game. Just keep in mind that unlike a lot of the games, it still uses the PlayStation control. So if you're used to canceling being A and accepting being B, well, it's going to be like that on this game. But if you're used to canceling being B and accepting being A, it's going to be a little bit of a learning curve. But still, I highly recommend Dark Souls. It's a great game. Now, five, six on my list are actually free to play games. All right, and the fifth game on my list would happen to be Paladins. Uh, ports over from the console versions, they actually allowed it to go on the Nintendo Switch. All right, so as we're waiting for a match, I just wanted to talk about Paladins. If they can put Paladins on the Nintendo Switch, there is no reason why they can't put Overwatch on the Nintendo Switch. And I think it's something that we're going to be seeing Siege. by 2019 Select because Overwatch champion. is a super popular game. Right, so it looks like all of our opponents are level zero from the looks of things. So I'm using Genos, and again, much like a lot of the counterparts on PS4 and Xbox One, the main difference between playing a lot of these games on the Nintendo Switch and playing it on console is longer loading times, and you're going to see that games are getting better at optimizing the memory, as you can see by Warframe, as well as the Diablo 3 Eternal Collection. Now that's not saying games like Splatoon can't do the same thing, or Mario Kart because they're first party titles. ugly words are all one. And so, right, so now that the game's actually started, let's get in. But you can see everything runs in 60 FPS on Overwatch. Everything runs great. So it makes me wonder if they'll actually try and port Heroes of the Storm over as well. First blood. I just couldn't see the tunnel again. Still in the pool, but I'm not a pro at shooters, but you can see that Paladin is a great experience on the Nintendo Switch. And you're not going to be disappointed with the way it plays. I'm not a Paladins fan. And I'm not really good at Overwatch, so I'm not going to recommend either game. But if you're into the genre of games, you're not going to be disappointed by it. This is an honorable death. Except we back there on a heal on Whisper. Stop the payload. I'm gone. And you can see it just like Overwatch. We just got a blur. Like I said, I'm not a big fan of these type of games, but if Paladins can run on the Switch, why can't Overwatch? That's why I'm putting it on the Switch. Alright, so number six on the list of games that I recommend as far as third-party titles would happen to be one game that I do not like, and that is Fortnite. Alright, so again, number six on my list, as you can see right here, is Fortnite. As far as one of the games I do recommend on the Nintendo Switch, even though I'm not a huge fan of Fortnite in general, there's no denying that it is a great game, and it is one that you guys will enjoy. I'm going to try to land somewhere where people are not. Or somewhere we can try to get easy access to a weapon to obliterate somebody. Alright, so we got some dynamite. And 
And yeah, there you go. And this is why Fortnite is not my style of game. Of course, it also helps I didn't land in a good spot. But there you go, Fortnite. All right, so number seven on the list of games that I totally recommend for the Nintendo Switch as far as the third-party ports is Elder Scrolls Skyrim. While that game was capped at 30 FPS to begin with, it runs great, and one of the deepest RPGs on the Nintendo Switch is available in a portable form, and it runs great. Everything that you guys remember about Skyrim is a great game. Now, I'm really hoping that the developers do actually try and port Elder Scrolls Online over to the Nintendo Switch. If they can make Warframe into 12 gigabytes, I'm pretty sure that even if Elder Scrolls Online end up being 50, 60 gigabytes, maybe bundle it with a 128 gigabyte micro SD card, and it would be a good sell. People would totally enjoy the game. But yeah, Skyrim in all its glory is an amazing game with also ha having deep levels of customization and I think it looks really good even on a TV. And the fact that it's open world, the fact that yes it's a five year old game but it runs great on a Nintendo Switch. When it first came out, it was basically an instant buy for me. If you're watching this video on Black Friday, I believe it is half off at $29.99. I believe some retailers even have it for that price. and. It's totally worth picking up. They didn't discount it last year, but they did discount it this year, man. Look at that epic murdering right there. We just laid him to waste. So Balbus goes down. We're gonna take all this stuff because we can. So now his buddy. Maik wishes you well. Stuff in the same place because you're alive. Looks like this guy won't actually die, but we even set him on fire. But yeah, Skyrim is a great game. Even have short keys you can set up, like you can have the Highland Shield, the Master Sword. This is great. Maik is very practical. Get with, uh, he has no need for me. This guy thinks that he's all that. We're going to knock him down again, just like that. Skyrim is a great game. I highly recommend checking it out, especially if you have time to kill. Several hours invested in it. And, yeah, there's still a lot of fun to be had. All right, so the eighth game on my list of games that I feel have amazing ports, and that would be Dragon Ball Fighter Z. And the reason that I say Dragon Ball Fighter Z is that you got up and punched me for a fight. I'm in the middle of the game. I'm a huge fan of it. Now, this is also, in my opinion, the game that raises the question. Dragon Ball Fighter Z can be ported to the Nintendo Switch. Why can't Tekken 7? Why can't Mortal Kombat X? Why can't Injustice 2? Why can't King of Fighters? Why can't Dead or Alive? Like, these fighting games are missing the boat, and Namco Bandai bringing Dragon Ball Fighter Z to the Nintendo Switch, absolutely amazing. The game runs great, and outside of maybe Pokémon Tournament DX, and maybe even so in some cases, this is probably the best game I've but Dragon Ball Fighter Z, if you're in the anime style fighting game, you are not going to be disappointed. Now we have gear and gear to the game. Now we have gear and gear to the game. Now we have gear and gear to the game. Now we have gear and gear to the game. Now we have gear and gear to the game. Now we have gear and gear to the game. Now we have gear and gear to the game. Now we have gear and gear to the game. Now we have gear and
You can see the kills go on and you can get what I'm trying to do. You wouldn't have known if you were in Nintendo 15, but you have to be able to tell it. It's not a ゲームとセリアを見たことがあるんですけど、ゲームとセリアを見たことがあるんですけど、ゲームとセリアを見たことがあるんですけど、ゲームとセリアを見たことがあるんですけど、ゲームとセリアを見たことがあるんですけど、
or even Dark Souls that runs in 30 FPS. Why can't more game developers actually take a chance on the Nintendo Switch? We know it's a lot better than the Vita ever will be, because unlike the Vita, the Nintendo Switch does not compromise its controllers, allows you to play more than one person in mind, which a lot of people don't like to play games by themselves. The exception would be people that play Skyrim, because that game is meant to be played alone. But there's so many good games on the Nintendo Switch that you really just want to play with other people. And I'm glad I didn't bat that ball in. So, I think we've done enough demonstrations of Rocket League. I ended up scoring a goal and just blowing somebody up. But there's a lot of fun to be had with Rocket League, and somehow we just scored 4 nothing. But yeah, Rocket League, definitely number 9 on the list. And number 10, also an inspirational game in the shooter category. Which leads me to believe that shooters do work on the Switch. Now, one thing to also note is that Panic Button is the exact same company that ported Warframe. Panic Button is doing a great job with porting games. And definitely should be applauded for the work that they put in. So we're going to get into some Doom gameplay next. And that is the game that I feel has revolutionized the shooters. And the fact that Doom was ported on the Switch. The fact that Warframe was ported on the Switch. Why aren't developers taking more chances with their their IPs? Again, like I said, there's no reason that Call of Duty can't be played on the Nintendo Switch. There's no reason that Injustice 2 can't play on the Switch, other than the simple fact that the game is probably dead. But Tekken 7 would definitely see some traction. And I think even Injustice 2 would see some play on the Nintendo Switch. I would definitely buy it and support it. If they release the game on the Switch. Being able to take it at work. You also have to figure that games on the Nintendo Switch are great. Because they're portable. It's not like you have to have them to a TV. The console is easy to put in a little bag. It's a lot harder to put a PlayStation 4 in a bag. It's just like comparing a gaming laptop to a Surface Book 2. A gaming laptop is going to be a pain in the ass. But in light situations the Surface Book 2 can actually be ported around. Like an actual laptop. And be used for you know, actually gaming on the go. Whereas your 17-inch laptop, you're going to have to set it up on a table, hook it up to a monitor. That's not the case with the Nintendo Switch. You can play that portable. But yeah, if Panic Button can put Doom on the Nintendo Switch, which was an amazing feat, when it was first introduced, why can't more companies adapt? I really applaud Panic Button for being able to put a great game like Doom. And Wolfenstein 2 The New Order, I have not picked up that game yet, but that is another game I would highly recommend. And it probably hasn't been discounted on the Switch because it is still a new game. And yeah, much like, you know, Dark Souls and NBA 2K18, it's not going to run at 60 FPS. There's going to be some graphical downscaling to Doom. It's still a great game. Try it out. You're not going to be disappointed by that. And this is my list of top 10s. As I've said, there are some other honorable mention third-party titles that I feel are amazing. For example, I love Mega Man. You could also throw an argument for NBA 2K Playgrounds 2, which is a decent game. You can also throw up Arena of Valor, which is a port. You got Blaze Blue Cross Tag Battle. You got Titan Quest, which is probably not the greatest game of all time, but a good alternative to Diablo. You got Darkest Dungeon, which is good. Dragon Ball Xenoverse 2. Street Fighter 30th Anniversary Collection, which is really good. You got Arms, which is a first party title, which is amazing. You got Mario Rabbit's Kingdom Battle, which is also a great strategy RPG. You got South Park The Fractured But Whole. Great third-party title for the Nintendo Switch. You got Shining Resonance Refrain. You got Wise 8. That's a great game. You got Ultra Street Fighter 2, which was like almost a launch title, which is a great Street Fighter 2 version. And you even have Mercenary Saga Chronicles, if you like the Final Fantasy Tactics style of games. And speaking of Final Fantasy, there's also the Final Fantasy 15 Pocket Edition, and there's supposed to be other versions of Final Fantasy, including 12, getting ported to the Nintendo Switch. So, if you like this little 10 Nintendo Switch ports that look amazing for third-party companies, please give this video a like rating. 
comment, subscribe, share this video amongst your friends, and as a favorite, check out my other Nintendo Switch videos playlist, Facebook, Twitter, and Twitch, which are all Hollywood shown on my Instagram, which is Hollywood shown as God, and I look forward to showing off more games in the future. And I even recommend the FIFA series, FIFA 18 and 19, which is coming via Target, are all great games. Leave your comments down below. Let me know if there's any games you think I've missed off the list. And have a wonderful day. www.youtube.com slash Hollywood Show now. Subscribe, bitches!